Okay, so our next presenter is Chris Adele from Parsons Brickerhoff. Now, Chris is the last presenter tonight, and he's really going to wrap up what we've been saying all night long. We've been saying all night long that in GIS, we make things too complicated. We make it so difficult for people to understand what it is we do. And Chris has got some really good analogies for how we can talk to non-GIS people and make them understand what we do. So I'll give you Chris Adele. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically my uh, my talk today is to how we talk about GIS to the, the spatially naive people. So how do we how do we communicate um, our GIS uh, expertise to people that uh, really don't understand um, a lot about what we do? Um, so I mean, I was thinking about an analogy and how we can sort of explain this in the best kind of way. And what I thought was, how do you teach someone to cook an omelet when they've actually never really cracked an egg? They've never really experienced you know, what is inside an egg, they don't know how to create, they don't know that leap from an egg to an omelette. How do we, as GIS people, sort of uh, get that across? So as GIS professionals, we are the executive chefs of the spatial world. So we, we're the guys that do all the fancy stuff at the top end. We're the ones that have all the ingredients, we put everything together, and we, uh, we, we produce things that people really don't understand, like people that really don't understand what we do. So, you know, when you're, when you're cooking, when you're eating a good meal, do you really care about exactly what ingredients have gone into that meal? Do you really care about the techniques that the chef has used to cook that meal? Or are you really interested in the final product? So, these are the ingredients that we do to make a simple view shed, for example. So, you know, we use terrain models, we use observation points, we use vertical distance, we have some weird graphs here, we have lots of, um, you know, trigonometry and whatever, but are people really cared about that? What, what our clients really want to know is, can I see my new reservoir from where I'm standing? You know, can, are people able to see my new piece of infrastructure? And that's all they really care about. They don't care about the stuff that goes into actually producing that view shed. Technical terms, are they really needed? If a chef is teaching someone how to cook for the first time, does he really need to say to someone, deglaze the, deglaze the pan? Or is it better for him to just to say, add a bit of wine? You know, it's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. Deglaze is technical, adding one is easy. Again, triangulate, triangulated irregular networks. Do we need to call them a triangular, triangulated irregular network? Or even a tin? No one knows what a tin is. Can we just call it an elevation model or a surface? And I think that's a hell of a lot easier for people to understand. So as GIS professionals, what are our greatest assets? For a chef, his greatest asset is his final product. It's his hamburger at the end. It's the thing that he makes. And for GIS people, our greatest asset is our um, is our final product, and our final product <laughs> is our pretty maps. So I mean, I know that pretty maps are sometimes the th things that people don't like generating as much, but it really is the, the thing that we can show to people exactly what we do and how we do our and how we get to our, our results. So you know, you got to show off your greatest outputs. And again, it's not so, it's not just our maps; it's our web pages, it's our posters, it's our reports, it's all the things that everyone's been talking about today. They're the things that we need to show off. We need to show off our greatest outputs and we need to get that over to people to show them exactly what we can do. Again, if we're, um, if we're just starting out, um, are we overextending ourselves? If, um, can we really cook a seven course meal for 50 people? Are we, you know, I guess the key thing is to, not to promise too much to people who are starting out. In my opinion, a, you know, a simple working product is better than an elaborate dub. So if someone asks you um, how to how to um, how to boil water, do we want to you know give them a robot to build a um, to boil water, or we just want to offer them a kettle? You know, we just we don't need to get too we don't need to get too technical too quickly. We've got to give them the basic tools. When you're teaching someone to cook, at the beginning you give them the basics. You give them the wooden spoon, you give them the ladle, and you teach them how to stir. And I think in GIS we've got to do the same thing. We've got to start from the basics. And then if we give people the basics, then generally, in my experience anyway, people come up with their own ideas. If we give them the ground, we give them the ground knowledge, then they're going to come to us and start coming up with their own ideas. And that's what we need people to do. We need people to come to us with the things that they've thought about because that's going to be better, in, you know, it's going to be better work for us. So a good way to get that across is to use live demonstrations. If a cook wants to show a new, if a cook wants to show a new um, a new recipe, what does he do? He gets people, he lines people up, and he shows them how to prepare the meal. He shows them how to cook. He shows them how he gets to gets to the end point. And I think we need to do that in GIS. We need to uh, get people around and show them how we do things, how we create simple buffers, how we join tables, how we do really basic stuff. If we can. Show people how we do that, and again, you know, the chances are that we're going to um, 
they're going to want to use GIS more. And I guess the other thing when we do that is to highlight the benefits. Now in my industry, the benefits generally in GIS is that we save time and we save money for our clients. Now for other people it might be different, but we need to, we need to focus on that. And what, more importantly, what we need to do is actually get rid of the chef's hat. We need to stop being pretentious, we need to stop being intimidating, and we need to actually listen to what our clients need. Because if we don't actually deliver what they need, then we're not going to get any work in return. So hopefully with all of that, you'll have a kitchen full of chefs ready to explore the spatial world.